fractured jaw. And Nani Mothman is also missing, leaving places in the side for the very experienced Eamon Bannon and for Neil Berry, who starts a match for the first time in eight weeks. Craig Levine, who missed the international against Italy, is fit to resume in defence. And after that magnificent performance against Baggio on Wednesday, 21-year-old Alan McLaren now pits his wits against Ali McCoist and Mark Haitley. And that's another challenge you'll relish, because apart from his footballing ability in defence, he has an attitude to the game which will undoubtedly serve him well, both for club and country. And Rangers are without skipper Richard Goff and midfield man Stuart McCall. And after his labours for Scotland in midweek, Ian Durant is kept on the bench to remain fresh, no doubt, for the Marseille game on Wednesday. But Ian Ferguson and Trevor Stephen return to the midfield and Gary Stevens plays his second match of the season at right back. And that save from Aranio on Wednesday gave Andy Gorham his 14th shutout of the season. 12 of them for Rangers, 8 in the league, and only twice has he lost more than one goal in a match for his club in a 3-2 Skull Cup win over Dundee United and a 4-2 league win over Motherwell. And the referee this afternoon is our most experienced official, 48-year-old David Simon Rutherglen, who's in his 21st season as a grade one official. And despite the steady downpour of rain, a marvellous atmosphere inside Tyne Castle for the top of the table clash, second top hearts against the leaders Rangers and a match which is absolutely vital, particularly to Hearts. Peter Haustrup playing wide on the left of the four-man Rangers midfield. Here's John Robertson. Trying to turn McPherson. And the pressure all the way, John Robertson, but he looks very lively there. Haitley's return pass is played too firmly for McCoist. So in the middle of the field, Hearts have Derek Ferguson and John Miller right in the centre. And Eamon Bannon pushing forward on the right with Baird and Robertson through the middle and attack. That's one for Robertson to chase, but he's caught offside. David Robertson complaining there, a little bit of a lack of communication from central defence. getting up extremely well against Haitley. There's John Miller, now Robertson. Good running again by Miller. Hart's getting plenty of players forward here. Ferguson has gone through the middle. Great play there by Ferguson. Well, that's been a feature of Derek Ferguson's play of late. He's been supporting a front man much more effectively. Thoroughly miserable afternoon, but that's not being noticed so far by the supporters. That's Van der Ven. Easily cut off by Steven. He's waiting for movement on the left. Hoistra has David Robertson ahead of him. Across goes McLaren. It's a good cross by Robertson. There's Haitley. And a very important interception by Van de Ven. That header from Haitley was measured to go straight into the path of McCoist. So Van de Ven did a vital job there for Hearts in defence. Gordon will take this corner. John Brown's on the near post. McPherson and Haitley right at the edge of the penalty area. Short it goes to Stephen. Well, Trevor Stephen still working hard to find his touch. There's Robertson. Stephen trying to give that shot to Ferguson. Berry, Bannon, Ian Ferguson runs it back, with some help from Stephen. Rangers trying to settle into that passing game. Gordon using Gary Stevens, who dropped into central defence after McPherson made that sortie up. There's a great ball from John Brown, here's David Robertson. Reflection came from Van de Ven. McCoy and Haitley waited in the middle, but what a magnificent pass it was from John Brown. There's no quality of this delivery. David Robertson tried to put this in early across the face of the goal, and Van de Ven positioned himself superbly for Hearts. Another very important piece of defending by Van de Ven. It's 
Nelson forces the ball on. Miller is there. Back with Ian Ferguson. Bannon did well with a challenge. And the player up front is John Robertson for Hearts. And that acceleration there again from David Robertson enough to halt that move forward by Hearts. And ball against John Robertson. A little discussion there on the referee, David Syme. Hately again getting a touch on, but it was interesting to see Levine continue the challenge and Van de Ven immediately peel off to provide depth behind him in case Hately got the touch on. Carefully thought out defending, as usual, from Hearts. John Miller lofting it forward. Brown's clearance. Followed by Robertson on McPherson right in front of the referee's eyes. Stevens forward, in goes Levine, breaks for Steven. Great pass to Gordon, McCoy waits in the middle. There's McCoy! Supreme finishing once again from Ali McCoy. Goal number 32 of the season. His first glimpse of goal. Look at the quality of that pass from Trevor Stephen. Gordon waiting for McCoy to make the run and get away from Alan McLaren. The diving header left Henry Smith without a chance. A glorious goal from McCoy. Conceived brilliantly from midfield. And once again, it was the timing of his run into the area which made life so difficult for the last defence. To the throw, to Rangers. McCoy back to Stevens. A confident play by Stevens. And the vent cutting across the bows of Hately. And Craig Levine. Didn't realise Hausto was in such close attendance. It's a rocky spell this now for Hearts. Rangers may sense the game is now there for the winning in the next few minutes so they can snatch a second. The Hearts require to dig in now if they're to remain in the game. Good judgment shown there by Van der Ven. Well, he's had a good match so far. Marshalling that defence. Hately. Good play, forceful play by Gordon. McCoy sends it forward, there's no offside. There's Dale Gordon with a shot. Excellent play again from Rangers. Inspired by Dale Gordon, who adopted such a positive attitude there in midfield and that's what gave the chance for McCoy to release him through the middle that's a very good effort beyond the far post there's Baird McKinley halted by Stevens this is McCoy, the space on the right for Gordon McKinley have been caught upfield there and an attacking move for Hearts Gordon trying to exploit that this is McCoy Was he guilty of overconfidence? It looked as though he was trying to chip this in. Didn't catch it properly, made it easy in the end for Henry Smith, but he did have lots of space. And that indeed was the last attack of the first half, which has ended satisfactorily from the Rangers' point of view, thanks to that superb goal in 24 minutes scored by Ali McCoy. It's his 32nd of the season, created by Trevor Stephen initially, then by the cross from Dale Gordon, a diving header, and that's the difference between the two teams at halftime. It's Hearts nil, Rangers won. A vital 45-minute period coming up with Hearts requiring to find a way through the Rangers defence at least twice if they're to keep right in the league race. Rangers, good value for that one-goal lead at halftime. Hearts certainly battled all the way, especially early on, but from the moment when Rangers conjured up that Superb opening goal from McCoy in 24 minutes. They look to be in command. And a little bit of handball there by McCoy. So he ducked his brand new strip for the second half. Well, it's great enthusiasm there, trying to keep themselves warm. They've given up on keeping dry. The 
Bounce the ball, takes it through to Hallstra. Levine intercepts. What's the make first and both miss it? It's through with Gary Stevens now. An awkward one there for McLaren. All he can do is hold it up there for Ferguson. And there is McCoist. Rangers want a corner, they're not going to get one. There was a flag up for offside here. McLaren lost his bearings there. There was Ian Ferguson with a shot. Now McCoist at that point, I'm sure, was offside. Eric Ferguson. Baird. Berry. Challenge is made by Steven. And then by Van de Ven. But Steven is onside. He's in the clear now. He tries to go into the Hearts box. Looking for Hayfley. And the cover provided extremely well there by Craig Levine. Some good play here by Trevor Steven. He tried to look up and spot Hayley. Levine was alive to that. Headed away was by Levine. He thought there was a deflection. He's looking for the throw, but he's not going to get it. Hayley's header. It's on there by McCoy. The early ball inside. McLaren at full stretch. That's great goalkeeping by Henry Smith. McCoy and Gordon hurtling in on him, and he kept his eye on the ball all the time. What a good exchange this is. Hately to McCoy. Space now for Hately. Sends it in early. McCoy trying to get away from McLaren. Gordon was there also. It's well taken by Robertson on the run. Derek Ferguson playing it back through for John Robertson, but David Robertson is so quick. Well, that pass from Derek Ferguson would normally have been an outstanding ball, but against the pace of David Robertson, it was made to look a poor ball, which it certainly wasn't. Now start releasing Hately, McCoy on the far post, Ferguson wants the ball shot, he was the target. A very good positioning there by Van de Ven. McLaren to Bannon. Show the charge on the line there. Brown and Robertson, the result will be a free kick, I think, to Hearts. Very old, it's very hard to tell what's going through the mind of Joe Jordan, the Hearts manager. Right away, the right person, here's Hatley. Levine. Easy one for John Brown. Here's Ferguson. McCoy was just offside. Just two or three yards inside the Hearts half. He was trying to stay on the halfway line. Didn't quite make it. So the referee insisting that the free kick is taken from inside the Hearts half. That's certainly. Actually enough, there's John Robertson, just out of reach. Oh, how dearly Robertson would love to snatch an equaliser. certain that Baird couldn't get across him. Bannon looking for the run made by Baird on the far side, but that really is top-class defending. Kidley sends it in, there's Levine, swept away by McPherson. All the Hearts fans now building up some vocal support, they sense the prospect of an equaliser. Courtesy of Ian 
Schubert. And the head flick on from Levine played a vital part in that, allowing Baird to go diving in for the finish. Well, he enjoyed that all right. Ian Baird getting his fifth goal of the season and tying the match up at one goal apiece. That goal coming 17 minutes into the second half. But what a match we have in our hands now. Hearts will only be thinking about victory now. Here's John Brown, though, charging forward for Rangers. The interception made by Van der Ven. The linesman says the ball was out. The Hearts fans aren't happy about that, but it's a throw to Rangers. John Rollins, ball played in, the chance on there for McCoy, still breaks away again, and still no joy in front of goal for Rangers. Well, the driven ball in there caused the problem. There was Hayden knocking it into space. Trevor Stephen in the first chance, then McCoyst, and Smith put himself well. Parsons <laughs> header. No threat then for Smith. Gordon putting the ball too much here, I think. Making it difficult for House Trap. Costa wins it back though, holding off Berry. Ian Ferguson, Gary Stevens breaks on the right. Good ball inside, there's McCoyst. Always willing to try for goal, McCoyst, and everybody's around the box. It's just about the first time in the match Gary Stevens has gone so far forward. It was very effective indeed. The first time Cushion volley layoff, McCoyst snatched in that first time effort. So in the meantime, Hearts have made a substitution. They've brought on Ian Ferguson. And off goes Eamon Bannon. Thomas Steven to Ian Ferguson. Here's David Robertson. He's very pacey indeed going through this position. An awkward one. Well taken by Henry Smith. He got his body behind the initial effort from Robertson and then reacted extremely well to McCoy's attempt on the rebound. Look at the way this spilled away from him, but he was there to smother the effort from McCoyst. Neil Ferguson tried to find Stevens. Robertson intercepted. Good ball that from Beard. Another example of his very good feet there as Neil Ferguson goes charging forward, taking on John Brown. And the goal kick it is. Well, he's unorthodox, but he's full of enthusiasm. He's got a good touch in the ball frequently, and he's troublesome for defence. He's all right, Ian Ferguson. Stop. McKinley in very swiftly on Gordon. Well, there's further activity on the Hearts bench. I think they're going to bring on the second substitute, Glyn Snowden. And it looks as though Van de Ven is struggling to continue. He's limping very heavily at the back. Here he is now, Van der Ven. You'll see how difficult he finds it to manoeuvre himself. McLaren forward, it's cut off easily by Brown. This is Haitley. Hoistra outside him, and the Hearts supporters thought the ball was carried out by Hoistra. The linesman didn't agree. Van de Ven for one Robertson clearly offside. And now Van de Ven will leave the field. That thigh injury, too much to cope with. He goes off. The replacement is Glyn Snowden. So Gorham lashing it forward with that lower trajectory. Playing the ball from the ground. It's a good pass that from Levine. He was caught late by McCoy. Snowden plays the ball on. Levine is still out of the play on the ground. This is Ian Ferguson. Showing a lot of confidence in possession. Berry on the right. Another away reaches Derek Ferguson. That's for Snowden. Levine is still on the ground inside the Hearts half. Another away there by McPherson reaches Miller. That's Beard back to Berry. 
still the pressure is on. Ball reaches John Miller, was that handball? No, says the referee. It was played against Neil Gordon's left arm. Certainly didn't appear to be deliberate in any way. Well, Levine is back in his feet, but he doesn't look at all happy. Limping heavily at the back. Downpour is now turned to sleet and snow. Here's Peter Halstra. David Robertson racing forward on the left. Reaches Haitley. Again, an appeal. The ball's played against the body of Levine. So there was the ball played in by David Robertson. Half stopped in the way. There was Haitley playing that against. Craig Levine, no question of that being a penalty. And Rangers have made a substitution. On comes Ian Durant to replace Peter Haustra. Here's David Ferson, 10 minutes of the match remaining. Time for one of these sides to win the match. And that will have an immense bearing on the league championship. With Durant. Now McPherson, well forward on the right. Back with Gary Stevens. McCoy's layoff, that's Gordon. And very well read indeed by Alan McLaren, who abandoned his marking duties and Mark Hately to come across there. It's one for John Robertson to chase, but he has been very carefully policed all afternoon by the Ranger defence. That's Miller. Claren. Ian Ferguson. Derek Ferguson asked to do a great deal there. Challenging Durant. Here's Mark Haitley. McCoy is the clear on the right. Still Haitley looking for McCoy. Barry was in the way. And a very good recovery tackle by John Miller on Ferguson. And another good tackle, this time by Ian Ferguson. All oh, hearts battling as other lives depended upon it. And in the league championship terms, it does. Here's Gene Ferguson. Good goes towards Trevor Stephen. Good defending again by Hart. Not much on there for the clearance from Ferguson. This is Stevens. John Brown had called for that. The minute goes for McCoy, but Henry Smith is smartly off his line. So no joy at the death there for McCoy. The referee checking his watch as Rangers try to come forward again, but there is no more injury time. The match is over with honours even, and great credit goes to Hearts for the way in which they fought throughout that second half to overcome the goal scored by McCoist in 24 minutes. And they got the reward in 62 minutes when Ian Baird went diving in to cash in on the head flick from Craig Levine after the corner kick by Derek Ferguson. Hearts deserving something for their massive effort in the second half to cling to Rangers in the league championship. At the end of the day, in miserable conditions, McCoy, the Rangers captain, goes off, having scored the goal, which might have won the game for Rangers. Ian Baird equalised. It's Hearts won. Rangers won. Was your team selection today geared in any way with next Wednesday in mind? Well, we lose Ian Ferguson through suspension for Wednesday's game. And I felt that uh, both of our Scottish midfield players, Ian Durant and uh, Stuart McCall, uh, would take a little chance if we played them and got them injured. That would have meant we've lost two Scottish players out of the midfield. So I couldn't really afford to do that. So in that respect, yes, I had to take that into account today. So will McCall and Goff be all right for Wednesday? Stuart McCall's OK. He would have played today if it hadn't have been uh, the reason that I mentioned to you there. Richard Goff's been doing a bit of training at Ibrox on his own the last couple of days. And if there's no reaction to that, uh, he'll be fit. And I am hopeful that we'll all get him. You brought in Gary Stevens, and Trevor Stephen came back. Is there a prospect of them featuring on, on Wednesday as one of your foreign players, or <coughs> both of them? Well, I'll have to have a word. Well, it's, it's maybe asking a, a bit much of each of them, because Gary's been out for six months, and it's only his second first team game back. Trevor's only played a handful of games for us. He's been worse 
because he's been in and out the team and he's never had a run against. So I'll have to have a word with him and uh, we'll see how they are. Is there a possible opportunity here for some of the younger squad members? Yes, it looks as though, depending on circumstances, that, that we'll have to bring in um, maybe one of our younger boys, you know, David Hagen, Neil Murray, um, Gary McSweegan, Sandy Robertson, i will possibly be involved. Now, after beating Leeds, there has been this thought around that people are predicting Rangers can win the European Cup. How do you feel about that? Well, last year we were knocked out in the early rounds at Sparta Prague and uh, we were down, I'm told we were down in the bottom league of uh, European football, that Scottish football was rubbish and this and that. And then we beat Leeds and people turn around and say you're one of the favourites to win the European Cup. I prefer to take a middle ground in, in both cases. I don't think Scottish football is as bad as a lot of people make out and yeah, I don't think that uh, we're in a situation where we can rightfully say that we would go and win the European Cup. We have an opportunity now and I think we have uh, a chance on Wednesday with having Marseille in a home game, but uh, they would be the team that you would look as favourites to qualify from the section. So we've got possibly the most difficult team to play, first of all. But if we can get a result there and start off well uh, with this game and the other game against CSK Moscow, then um, we might end up in a good position around Christmas time. But I mean, the standard there, the margin of error in each of the games will be tight. So we look forward to the games and we're optimistic, but uh, I think it's uh, going over the top to say that uh, we're one of the favourites to win the European Cup. Well, we certainly hope you do very well. And the best of luck on Wednesday, Walter. Thanks very much. Thank you, John.